Hi, I'm Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Tonight I have a very special show. I have uh, Isabella Hunt Jones, doctor of the Comstock Civil War re reenactors. That's a mouthful. And we, I shot you about four years ago, and I tell you, I, we had such a good time. I'm glad you're back in, oh. uh, in this uh, Carson Valley. And we feel the same way. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I've been uh, just recently, a uh, probably within the last year, I found out that my um, Great grandfather was a Civil War uh, general, and he has been rather famous for oh. that period of time. And my mom screamed at the local uh, Carson Valley Museum, and it turned out to be Philip uh, Sheridan, a little town named after him in this valley. And so I've been really kind of hooked on studying the Civil War recently. And uh, so this is kind of a pleasure. And I had you scheduled before I even knew a lot of that stuff that he's was pr actually a pretty popular. But anyways, thank you for being on the show. He played a huge role in the Civil War uh, for the Union. He was quite successful in his campaigns and did cavalry and worked with Sherman and did a lot of stuff that was really interesting. He was quite a uh, successful general. Well, when uh, you do the uh, the reenactment re <laughs> in uh, Carson City for the Railroad Museum, yes, my mom is visiting then, and I'm gonna oh. bring her. I'm gonna bring her over. You know, part of the show is bringing in tourists, and I'm bringing in my mom and stepdad. That'll be wonderful. So we'll we'll, we'll see you there, and uh, we're gonna have uh, train battles at that one too. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be skirmishing uh, on the train. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. The Railroad Museum is really neat anyway, but we'll have a full camp there and we'll have a lot of fun. Well, also with us is uh, your uh, your husband, Jack Jones, and you blow up well, stuff. Actually, it's Eves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not a singer yet. <laughs> oh, okay. So, but anyways, you do all the, the things that blow up. Yeah, I, I'm a professional uh, pyrotechnician and uh, we do all the Hollywood special effect explosive stuff. So, and, and uh, we do, I say, we do some of the stuff for uh, Carson City, you know, for the railroad. And, of course, some of the big stuff will be for uh, Virginia City. And uh, I do some fake explosions, which looks like it blows up the track, stops the train, and the battle is on. But, but you <coughs> also do things down in L.A. for a great yes. big reenactment. We, yeah, we, we go to actually Simi Valley in Los Angeles. And we do a huge reenactment where they have a thousand reenactors on the field. Wow. And uh, it, it's quite an event. And uh, we do a lot of Hollywood special effects stuff down there. So that's what they expect. So. Well, how did you learn to do all these special effects? Well, actually, I started doing explosive when I was five down on the farm with my dad and my grandfather. And I just never quit. And I went to every school known to man for explosive demolition and... Uh, do, I do demolition of rocks, roads, buildings, bridges. You have 11 licenses, I believe. 11 licenses. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so it just kind of fits right into play with, with Civil War. And uh, I have built nine cannons, 11 mortars. I built Isabella a cannon for her birthday. Which I understand you're a top marksman with your cannon. Oh, we're so, I'm so proud of it. Um, my cannon is what they call a breech-loading cannon, a Whitworth. They were made in England. And um, they were incredibly accurate. And, and so um, they were used by the South. The, it was easier for the North to mass produce tubes for the muzzle loading cannon, but the, the breech loaders are incredibly accurate. And they're responsible for us having a signal core today because you can see where they were shooting. My two three pounder shoots um, two miles, a six pounder shoots seven miles. So they had to have forward observers to be able to shoot see where they're shooting. But they're so accurate that I've won for two years in a row a live fire shoot. Um, uh, what was it, a 498? 487 out of possible 500 against some of the modern guys with scopes. Do we have some of those shells around us? Uh, actually, we do. We have... Uh, <coughs> show what she's shooting. This is one of the bullets that it <coughs> shoots. Now, that's as heavy. That's three pounds. Wow. <laughs> and I guess I'm stronger than I thought I was. That one was <laughs> shot at a quarter of a mile. As you can tell, it's still flying straight at a quarter of a mile and hit the top left-hand corner of her X and the bullseye. Wow. And this is rifled. You see the rifling around it to fit the barrel of my cannon. My cannon is 40 millimeter. It's off the USS Tinian, which was a naval battle uh, ship, and um, it's rifled. So this has to be rifled to meet uh, the same. And we, uh, we have a friend who makes them for us. They're made out of lead. Wow. That's pretty impressive. When you shoot, and <laughs> that's just unbelievable. <laughs> I used to go to uh, Civil War reenactments in, uh, in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, when I was a young man in high school and college, and they are just awesome. 
the smoke goals and they're um, the, the competition is very fierce and very competitive so you it must is. be very very good oh i love doing it and you know you have to recite every time because they roll back oh yeah yeah i know that's, I said. that's pretty darn <laughs> pretty darn impressive well i had good teachers i will say that i had some excellent teachers and i owe them everything but uh, during the Civil War, we know of 500 documented women who dressed as soldiers, went out and fought on the line, carried a musket, lived with the men, did everything they did. And um, we have pretty well figured out that probably their squad of five or six people knew that um, they were women, but they didn't um, report them. Was this one of those pictures? This is a picture of me can, as, uh, as a guy. Can Lloyd get a picture of that maybe? And you're a guy in this, this yes, picture? Yes, portraying a, a man on artillery. Well, I saw another picture where you were a man. Oh, that's the one where you're shooting the cannon? Yes, this is shooting the cannon right now. Um, and what character is that that you're representing? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a first sergeant. Okay. In our artillery battery, and I'm called Sergeant Ike. And I don't have a history for Sergeant Ike yet. Um, I've, I've spent so much time on my persona as a woman that I really haven't gotten around to <laughs> finding one <laughs> well, as a man, so well, I'm going to work on that. This is a very beautiful outfit you have on. Thank you so much. This, I, I've spent a lot of time studying um, women's roles, um, the textiles they used. These, this is all silk. This is totally appropriate for the period. And um, we try to be totally authentic. From the gloves, they, they wore pearls. Pearls were the gem of the day. Wow, they're beautiful. And I have to tell you, uh, if I may, a little of my history. Sure, I was going to say, aren't you a doctor at, uh, of history at Berkeley? Yeah. I, archaeology. Archaeology? I'm an archaeologist. Uh, I'm not at Berkeley. I'm, I'm, I'm retired. No, I never taught at Berkeley. Really, but that's where you went to school. That's where I went to school. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wish I was still there. Um, my great-grandmother was named Isabella Trotter. She married my great-grandfather, who was Captain... Ambrose Trotter. Okay. Okay, he was captain in the first um, Maryland con uh, Confederate cavalry. And uh, after the war, they moved to um, Indian Territory. But her history was like mine. I, I was raised in Texas. Okay, and people say, oh, that's not the South. And I said, don't go there. Oh. <laughs> don't go there if you think that one goes south. But uh, she was married at 16 to a business partner of her father who owned a cotton plantation. And he was an older gentleman who lived in um, um, Pennsylvania. And he had a steel foundry. And during the war, his son, who was, his, who was in the Union Army, came home with the measles, gave the measles to his father. Now, my great-grandmother had had the measles, so she didn't die, but he left her the foundry. And she got a, a, a lawyer friend of the family to run it as the front person. But she ran blockade ships. She ran ammunition to the south. Wow. Yeah, she was quite the lady. And then after the war, they moved to Indian Territory and opened a stage stop between Fort Smith, Arkansas, and Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Wow, that's beautiful. I, I know. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a family history. I, I, actually, I was born in, in Texas, so don't pick on any of us Texans. <laughs> you don't mess with the Texans. No, you don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, I was so proud to be named after her. I think it's a wonderful story, and uh, I'm very grateful that my That's mother... That's a beautiful name. Yeah, I like it, too. But it's spelled uh, into unusually. It's I-Z-A instead of I-S-A, and I think it's because my great-grandmother came up over on the boat uh, three months old from Ireland. And uh, I think when they said her name, which might have been Elspeth or whatever, but the people just wrote down what they heard. At the, at, uh, probably at Ellis Island. That happened. My family was, ended up being called Ireland. <laughs> 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 I guess we're lucky they could spell it. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I don't know where they got some of the names they came up with, but, um, but I'm proud to wear it. I really am. I, I'm very proud of her. Well, you, I... Uh, you're going to do a number of events this summer, I imagine. Uh, I, I've heard about the, uh, the one in... Um, the, in Carson City at the Robert Museum. Yes. And you have one at Labor Day at the, um, in Virginia City. In Virginia City. Jack and I uh, are the coordinators of that. And, and it's uh, the shining star of our year. We're very, very proud of it. Um, we love everybody in Virginia City. They have been so good to us. I can't tell you. We couldn't put on our event without them. But we, do, we, we camp in Miners Park in Virginia City. That sounds fun. And we have a school day on the Friday before when we're busing in kids from as far away as Susanville. All right. Yeah, and they're going to come in and they get a, a full history of the Civil War, both north and south. We try to be as fair as we can. 
And um, then on um, the weekends, we have train battles on the V&T uh, Railroad, and we put a flat car onto the train with cannon on it. Ooh. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we put the troops on the train, and then we put all the people on the train, the public. And we choo-choo out, and we get just past the Gold Hill Station, and Jack blows up the tracks. Not really, but looks good. Sounds good. And um, we, then we get attacked. And if it's Confederates on the train one day, the Union attacks that day. And if the Confederates are, uh, uh, the Union goes on the train the next day, and then the Confederates attack. And there's a silver box on the train, and they have to find the silver box. They have to go among the people, and it's usually under a woman's dress. Well, I think I saw, well, that, that, old, <laughs> that old trick. I, I, I think I saw an old uh, John Wayne movie where they, they, had, um, they were sticking hornets or something in through an opening of one of the cars and getting people to jump out. And, and then, oh, they, then yeah. they robbed it, and oh, that was... Yeah. Uh, Big fundraiser for the Civil War. For yeah. some, for they, the they, they did raids everywhere they could to get money because they were desperate for money. And um, uh, without being able to sell their cotton or their products, they really were in a, a, a trouble. Um, they didn't have food. They didn't have shoes. They didn't have a lot of things. It was very sad. Well, I, when I, uh, we, we talked to you last time in, uh, in Gardnerville, you, had, you said you were doing... Um, 18 reenactments that year. That well, was a lot, isn't it? Well, we personally still do 18 a year. 18? We, oh, yeah, absolutely. we start in March in Arizona at Picacho Peak because that's where the furthest western actual Civil War battle occurred. So we go over there, and that's when I get to shoot my cannon. Well, just the, <laughs> just the logistics, of because you're pulling a cannon, and you have all kinds of things you take with us. You know, some of the things you brought here. Are, yeah. But uh, that's a lot of dedication to the, uh, the history. Well, fortunately, we're both retired. And we both love it. We're really history buffs. And I, as an archaeologist, I have worked in Fort uh, Garland, Colorado, Fort Massachusetts, Colorado. Um, all of these are Civil War forts. I worked at the Presidio in San Francisco for three years. I really love this period. Um, I, maybe it's because my history is so tied to it, and, and I grew up with it. You, know, you can't grow up with it and not get this in the South. I was raised to be a debutante, so I give debutante classes to the young women in our group, and they have a coming out party at our Christmas ball. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a, that is just awesome. It was, it, I love doing it. Well, I really I, do. I, I, well, I lived my last two high school years in uh, by Gettysburg in a little town called York. Yes, a little and town when, called York. When we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we live by there. It's just by Gettysburg. It's just you just really get the feel, and there's so many uh, people came to that ground. It's like hallowed. It's like hallowed ground. It is hallowed. Ground. And uh, you got to really respect the the amount of people that fought in that war. It's just an intense feeling when you're when you're on that field. You just get jitters. Well, anyways, we're going to take a uh, short break, and when we come back, we're going to visit more with our Civil War period. Thank you. Everybody knows the battle flag on the Confederate side, but that flag next to it with the single star is the Bonnie Blue. Okay, you've heard about it in song and verse. The Bonnie Blue. really good with the early rifles could load and fire three times a minute. Muskets about one minute each firing. Sometimes the smoke from the cannon was so thick people didn't know who they were fighting.
might be setting the aim for the colonel. <laughs> Isn't the band wonderful? Hi, we're uh, back from break, and uh, uh, Jackson, uh, tell us more about some of these pictures of his blowing up people, looks like. Oh, yes. I remember uh, when we did the, uh, the reenactment here in uh, Gardnerville, you blew up the, the general from the north or something? And <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's, he's always getting blown up. Well, we're actually not choosing which side we blow up. It just, it's, uh, I say it's a love of history, and we portray both sides, you know, north and south. And Jack is an equal opportunity exploder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Believe me. What? That was for sure. Both sides got blown up pretty good. Yes. But on that particular day, the um, actually you had a lot of things going. You had horses going back and forth. You had uh, uh, people were lined up and then running around and things blowing up like this picture. Oh yes. That's a, and these weren't quiet. These were loud, and very very. Um, you the team doing the Regan actors were were very very good, and I thought someone said that you, you spend about. Um, Oh, an hour or two talking to each side, talking to each other about what you oh, want yes. to do that day, because it's basically uh, a skirmish. And if I remember my stats right, I think you said there's like 10,000 skirmish skirmishes alone in like Missouri. Yes. Yes. And so you imagine how throughout all the states, how many skirmishes there actually were. So when you had, um, well, you had a lot of people, but just imagine these pictures. <laughs> that's just, it's a flash. <laughs> yes. And I keep on thinking that the guy's sideburns are going to burn up. <laughs> oh, yeah. they, uh, but, but it's so well, fast, it's, uh, you can't see it by the naked eye. Wow. And this actually portrays a cannon going off and a bullet landing and hitting and blowing up. So, and I remote control all of this. So, so uh, you're, when she shoots off the cannon, yes. you're, you're timing it where that would be the next instantaneous thing. The next impact, yes. Well, that, is, that is awesome. How many of these charges do you do in a show? It depends. I used to do 56 a battle in about a half an hour. And it, it was amazing. They said, how can you remember all that? I said, I don't know. I just, I just remember that I have, a, I have just like a board and I'm just like waiting for a cannon shot for the north. And I hit it on the south, waiting for one on the south, hit it on the north. And then if you listen to me, they tell me it's pretty insane. Is I'm I'm talking all the time. I said, "Come on, give me a shot. Give me a shot. I need it. I need it now. Now, boom. And I, okay, I need this one. I need this one right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Boom. So it's uh, it it's I guess pretty funny to to listen to me. Is uh, after a couple of battles, we've had guys that were filming me, and they're laying on the ground just about laughing. They said, "We have never ever seen a guy go through so many commands in his mind waiting for a shot." And actually doing something, and then jumping back and forth to uh, to make it work out. So it uh, and actually this is uh, one of the pictures of uh, some of the cannons on the train at Virginia City. Don't move it. So uh, it, uh, but and then that's what they'll be seeing in this. Uh, that's Labor what they'll Day. be seeing. And uh, like I say, as we do a fake explosion, which uh, when a train comes into the battlefield, and uh, it looks like we blow up the track, the train comes to a stop, and then, of course, the, we have the north on the train one day and the south on the ground. They come rushing up on the train looking for the silver, and uh, it's pretty impressive because when they come up on the train, they'll come right up next to you and they'll be pushing you around looking for the <laughs> silver, and it's amazing to look on the people's face. Their eyes get so big, like, oh, man, I'm right in the middle of the battle, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's really impressive. So, so some tourists are going, oh, it's not underneath my, my skirt. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it, it's a lot of fun. And, it, uh, and then after it's over, they come down and talk to the guys with the cannons, and, you know, so we give them a, a – and in our group, we have some great historians. Well, it's I mean, just absolutely great. So, 
they can tell you what so and so had for breakfast, and we have actually have a General Lee that is so accurate that he even puts little wedges in his shoes oh. to be exact same height as General Lee, and authentic. I mean, down to the least little minute detail. Well, when you say reenactors, you're you're very correct. Well, if someone wants to get a hold of you for uh, to have a reenactment, how would they do that? Well, we do. Uh, we're having a little trouble with our website, but. We're on Facebook as Comstock Civil War Reenactors, and uh, once you get to that, and uh, our names are on, and uh, or you can email or you can email either one of us. I'm Isabella1860 at yahoo.com. That's really easy for people to get hold of. Okay, and then you have a phone number too, probably. Yes, seven two two five eight four nine. I just wanted to make sure we got that out there because I, in case I get carried away again, which I, I've already am all, all kinds of things from my past. Just, I know. I just was so lucky to have um, been in so many museums growing up that the things you do help promote museum activity. And like I said, I was growing up in a museum in, uh, in Atlanta that was just very emotional. And uh, I'm just kind of like, I'll let you talk, actually, because I don't, I don't want to gab about me. But you, you have a flag on your uh, lap, and we yes. talked about it, and I, that was one of the things I missed as a kid of what it, it, it meant. Well, you know, people don't realize that the South had three national flags. They think the battle flag is the Southern flag. It's not. It was strictly a battle flag. And um, upside down, sweetie. And um, they started out with the stars and bars, which a lot of people are familiar with. But it looks so much like the American flag, the Northern flag, that they got confused. People got confused. So they went to this. This is the second national flag, which is called the Stainless Banner. And the problem with this banner was that it looked kind of like people were uh, surrendering. They saw the white flag waving, you know. So they went to another one with a white border all the way around with the stars and bars in the middle, okay, which was the final flag, and that was the one. You know that the Confederate flags were not returned until 1889 oh, after wow. the war, and then they returned all the captured Confederate flags. But you know, you talk about emotion. If you get in the battle, and some, sometimes as a man, and I also used to portray a nurse, and it becomes so real that uh, I've had tears pouring down my face in the middle of a battle. And our history is just so important, and I'm so connected to my ancestors, and I know Jack is too, and uh, most of the people who come to us. We had some people from the Bay Area come and visit with us, and they said, well, it's all about guns. We said, no, no, no it's no, not. No, no, no. <laughs> and they talked to everybody, and they said, we can't believe it. You guys are like a family. They said, everybody knows their history, their ancestry. I said, that's right. That's why we do it. Our mandate is to teach history, and that's what we want to do. I agree with Shelby Foote. I think that the United States Civil War was the most important moment in our history. And he says it defined the character of Americans, and I think he's absolutely right. If you pull out a chair for a lady, it's because we wore these huge skirts and we couldn't sit down without pushing a chair across the room. So but it's even more important than that. It's imbued in us all of the ways that they lived and the, the ideas that they had. Being from the South, uh, we call it the, <laughs> we don't call it the Civil War. <laughs> we call it the war between the states. Because before the Civil War, they used to say that the United States are. We were a, co uh, a group of states that agreed to live together, a confederation. After the Civil War, we became a nation, and we said the United States is. And that's what we say today. And it's small words, but it's a major ideology and a, a change. And you know something interesting? Nevada was the first state to ever give the, Uni the United States government precedence over state law. Wow. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. We were the first. <laughs> 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 and why we're battle-born, because we became a state during the, the Civil War. It was a very important moment in our history as well. Um, I love what we do. I love my own history. Um, and I, I think it's tragically important that today's young people know uh, their history, because if you don't know your own history, then you don't know who you are. And I think that's why people are struggling a great deal today, is they well, really don't know who they are. Well, I think that's a great thing to keep on preaching to our young people, because the more they hear that, the more they'll understand. Do you ever do, I know you're, uh, you're also a docent, do you ever go out and do speeches too? I do. Uh, I speak to a lot of different groups. I'm speaking at the National, I mean the Nevada Historical Society in October, and um, I docent in Virginia City. 
which we really enjoy doing. We love Virginia City a lot. And a lot of people think of Virginia City's history as uh, 70s and 80s, when actually the big strike was in the late 50s and the 60s was a huge moment. It's one of the, the sponsors of our statehood, and that was really important, I think. But. Um, well, how often are you in Virginia City if people want to track you down as a, oh when you're a living when you're a living character? We're up there all the time, at least one day every week. Oh, okay. For sure. Unless we're out of town. This weekend, most of our groups, we would have had more flags, but most of our group is in uh, Roaring Camp at a huge uh, Civil War event that we go to annually near Santa Cruz. And due to certain circumstances in our lives right now, we, we didn't go. Um, which everybody is shocked about, but because we do 18 events a year, that is just amazing <laughs> to me. And it's a lot of like, you know, that's just a lot of distance, a lot of dedication. You know, we love it. People everywhere love their history. I mean, it's amazing the number of people who really want to know about their history and want to be involved. And we do a, an event in um, Simi Valley next to uh, Los Angeles, where there's thousand reenactors on the field. Forty thousand people come to see it. It's amazing. I think it's marvelous. I really love it. That's for charity, for the Rotary. Well, I was going to say, when you're doing these charity events, do you pass the hat, or how do you do that? Well, uh, they get all, they pay the expenses, and they, they make like um, 60, 80,000 a year for charity. Wow. I know. It's That's really a, wonderful. It's a good thing. We're getting closer to our last two minutes. Is there anything you want to, uh, I guess we should reiterate, you'll be at uh, Virginia City in the Labor Day weekend. And we'll be at the Railroad Museum in Carson City uh, July 2nd and 3rd, and we'll be in uh, Virginia City um, the September 2nd through the 5th. And then when are you going to speak at the Nevada Museum? In October, and I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember the date, and I can't, I think it's the 5th or the 13th. But well, we'll I try to, I'll have to look on my calendar. You can talk to them and see if we have permission to bring a camera. I like to oh, get that uh, that would be for, wonderful. For, for I'm going to be talking about women's roles. I think that's a very important uh, I do too. Uh, item right now. Because you showed a picture, and you mentioned that uh, on the battlefield of, at uh, Gettysburg, they knew there were women because of the screams after they I read were a, a young man's diary who was in artillery, in artillery, and he heard, they wouldn't allow them to take their wounded off the battlefield, so he heard a woman crying and dying on the battlefield. And he writes about it. It's very, it's very um Because if you ever go to these reenactments and the ones I were, uh, was at in Charlottesville, Virginia, they're using the live ammunition, and these are giant, these are musket balls. If you get hit by one of those things, you're going to have some major problems. That's why they amputated, because they couldn't put anything back together. It splinters the bone, and there's nothing left. It's really amazing. The whole medical thing is, could spend an hour on the medical thing. It's amazing. Well, I think we'll have to have you back and talk about the medical thing, because I could have sworn I heard you say that you were also a nurse. I, I did portray a nurse, yeah, and I learned a great deal about the whole medical uh, aspect of the Civil War, I, and I love doing it. Uh, Jack's been doing this for 39 years. Wow. I've yeah, only been doing it for 13. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we, when, you, when we, you met each other, it was like a, it was yes. in heaven because you both had the same routine. We met yeah. at a Civil War event. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it can be very, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you meet people from the past and they, 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 we look all kind of like age together and it's just a, it's a great thing. Well, we're down to the last 40 seconds. Uh, probably give out your phone number again so people can track you down. Okay. Uh, look for us on Facebook at Comstock Civil War Reenactors, and you can call us at 775-722-5849. And uh, you can always reach me at Isabella1860 at yahoo.com. Well, Jack, thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll have to oh. get some lessons when you come by. Wow. And thank you, Isabella, and I oh, really appreciate Michael, the what history. what a pleasure. Thank you. We'll have you back again in... Uh, I need more history. Oh, we well, do too. <laughs> come, come to one of our reenactments. We'll put you on a cannon crew, and we like to let you shoot. Sounds good. I'll bring my mom uh, Fourth of July weekend, and we'll, oh, we'll, we'll have a blast. Oh, be great. great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Thank you very much.